Have you ever heard about the Moldovan tradition of sacrificing the pig for Christmas? As I filmed the video and was editing it, I had second thoughts because it does contain some scenes where the pig is processed for meat and I know there are a lot of people who are sensitive to that. But I still decided to make it because it's such an important tradition for Moldovans and it has been passed for generations. I think this video can be a good way for you to understand Moldovan's relationship to food and agriculture. So if you're sensitive to this type of content, please do not watch the video. But if you do decide to watch it, please keep an open mind and remember that different cultures do things differently. On December 20th, Moldovans, especially those from the countryside, celebrate Ignat, a Christian holiday when you're supposed to sacrifice the pig for the Christmas table. This custom has pre-Christian origins. The Romans practiced the sacrifice during the Saturnalia festival. The pig was considered the embodiment of God Saturn, who died at the end of the old year to be reborn at the beginning of the next one. Incidentally, the name Ignat means fire in Latin, and it is the fire that purifies the slaughtered animal on this day. Nowadays, the slaughter of the pig doesn't have the old Roman connotation. The pig is slaughtered for more practical reasons, to provide the family with meat for Christmas. In fact, the pig is such an important source of meat for village people that the pork meat products will be eaten for months and months to come. Men slaughter the pig by stabbing. I have never assisted during the process, but I know it's not for the faint of heart. The pig skin, which is covered in hair, is scorched and scraped a couple of times. The men also burn some hay over it, which is supposed to give the skin a nice grassy aroma. Finally, they cover it with a blanket and let it rest, which makes the cleaning of the skin a little bit easier. There's a peculiar tradition where kids ride the pig. For me personally, it's a very strange ritual, but the kids seem to enjoy it. Why do we Moldovans do it? Well, it's believed the more the kids rejoice, the tastier the pig will be, or by other superstitions, the kids will be healthy in the year to come. After that, the cleaning resumes. The skin is thoroughly scraped with a knife and washed multiple times. It is a long and tedious process because the pig skin is supposed to come out white and supple in the end. Men are the ones who are exclusively in charge of slaughtering the animal. And tradition requires that the one who cuts the pig must go to church, confess, and the priest will forgive him in advance for the sin of killing the pig. So it's a big deal. Although nowadays, to be honest, not many men abide by this tradition. From the outside, the slaughter seems like a very cruel ritual. But in reality, it's an occasion for a family reunion. Family members will plan in advance, who speak to sacrifice for the holidays, and uh, come to each other's house to help. Women do not participate in the slaughter itself, because it is believed that they will pity the animal. And if that happens, according to superstition, the animal cannot die. However, the role of the woman begins the moment the pork reaches the kitchen table. Women are the ones who will make sure that no part of the pig will go to waste. Not only do they plan to whom to give which part of the pig, but also what to prepare from the meat that they are left with. The head of the pig is almost surely reserved for the salty song. This is a sausage variety made from boiled hand meat. The meat is deboned, finely chopped and salted and seasoned. With salt yet. In Moldova, we also eat raw pig skin, called chorik. As a kid, it was my favorite treat, and every time my dad went to the market during the winter, he would get some for us. To be honest, I've never eaten it off the pig, 
The people seem to be enjoying it, but uh, it's a bit wild, even for me. So you're supposed to clean the inner part of the skin from lard, rub it with some salt, and then roll it up for easier biting. You can see the whole family just enjoying their time. After this short break, the work resumes, there's still a lot to be done. Intestines are used as a case for blood sausage or mincemeat sausage. You either boil it or smoke it. Then the carcass is split into two. The ribs and the good cuts of meat are usually portioned, refrigerated and used throughout the year. The legs are split into the upper part, which is used for smoking, for something like bacon, and the lower part of the legs, the really bony part, that's used for making aspic because of its high content of gelatin. I love aspic, and if you are in Moldova, I urge you to try this dish. It doesn't look like much, but it's so delicious. Liver, lungs, and other entrails are used for making chigiri. These are mincemeat patties covered in organ membrane. It's an acquired taste, so do give it a chance. The big chunks of fat, slanina, are salted and rubbed with garlic and black pepper. After they marinate for a couple of weeks, they are eaten thinly sliced with bread and garlic. Finally, the rest of the fat and any meat leftovers are melted and poured into big jars. Unture, as we call it, is used for frying and gives any meal a delicious pork flavor. After slicing and sorting the meat, the housewife prepares a meal for all the people who help butcher the animal. The meal is called pomana porkului, which roughly translates as the alms of the pig. In a large cauldron, she combines the meat from the freshly slaughtered pig, including some muscle, liver, bacon, ribs, you name it. The housewife also makes a big mamariga, that's our Moldovan traditional dish, which is basically a thick corn porridge. In the middle of the table, she puts a bowl of pickles because it's winter time and that's definitely something you have around the house. And that's it.